think I need to work on this old gal because this one seems to be a popular tractor. And uh, now that Oliver 66 Farm Boy is back in the uh, making of videos, I've re remembered that he said something about 66 having a cracked block sometimes right behind the carburetor. And so far, I ain't seeing anything out of the ordinary on it. Sorry, I keep hitting shit. I can't really see it. I am not seeing anything up with it. So, I honestly think that it's pretty good to go. Um, I think what I'm going to do today is probably take the carb off, clean it, put it back on, um, do the plugs, and hopefully it'll run right for once. It'll be a little bit more reliable than what it is. Because if it works, that's another tractor I don't have to worry about anymore. Now, one issue will it start today uh, I gotta move that hopefully my teal tea doesn't spill on this round oh excuse me it probably will though oh well uh, see if we got crankage first uh. <laughs> no shit Oh, if Tucker watches this, he's gonna laugh at that. Oh, that's funny. That wasn't even two cranks. Okay, so you may be wondering why I'm going to um, clean the carb and put, or clean the plugs too. It's because of the fact that this thing kind of runs bad, so. That and, put, and uh, add to the fact that you can't have the throttle below this, like up here. I can't run it like that. It has to run, I think, fourth notch down or further or it won't run. It just dies. You can choke it and then idle it back down and it'll kind of work, but you gotta be really, you gotta be, it's picky about it. You gotta be really finessing it to figure out where it wants to do that at. This one, you can just idle it down as you should be able to. So I'm probably going to let the battery charge, bring it back here, shut it off, and get to it then. So I'll kick it. Like the clutch is about ready to give out because it screeches, so... Alright, so getting into it, I'm probably just going to take these side panels off because ease of convenience. Hopefully this shouldn't take all day. This should be fairly quick. I've taken carburetors off of tractors a couple times, so it's nothing too hard. And then, of course, cleaning plugs is easy as well. Ugh. So, what am I going to need to get this fella off of there? And, of course, I put my screwdriver up. <laughs> I needed a flathead screwdriver. Okay, so... I'm going to need a flathead screwdriver and my favorite pair of pliers to get your cut, your cotter pin removers, as I'm going to nickname them for now. Uh, let's see, what size is that going to end up being? Probably half. Yeah, definitely half. Okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. All right. Man, I need to stop wearing this thing. Okay. First comes first, take the easy stuff off. So, so, this is actually quite an unusual clamp from what I'm used to seeing. Oh, that wasn't even bolted in, or screwed in, I guess I should say. Okay, that side's off, that hose is off. I'll leave it like I found it. All right, and uh, How's that guy come? Oh, it's a little bitty screw. Not a screw, a little bitty bolt. Um, take a guess on 5 sixteenths, because it's freaking tiny. Nope, it's tinier than that. Oh, kill the spider. I'm going to need a flathead screwdriver, because I can also take it off with a flathead. And I would much rather ruin the flathead part of it than the bolt side of it, with her, where you can put the wrench on, because... Reasons. Ow. 
Come on. Damn, you're on her good. I might have to get a little bit of your wrench. Yep. Shit, that's on her good. Probably help if I didn't use such primitive tools. <laughs> get a ratchet. That's a quarter inch bolt, by the way. That'll burn the living piss out of you. Of course, it doesn't want to bend. There it goes. Then I need a rag because mess. And that carburetor leaks, I think. Uh, we'll let it choke out a little bit. Actually, I should just be able to pull that choke all the way out and it'll slide out. Yep, there it goes. Okay. There's that choke done. Take the throttle off. Where's my special handy dandy tools? There he is. Uh, the cotter pin, no wear out thou cotter pin. Oh boy, you're wedged in there good. So like I said, it's pinched in there. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, can I get it with that? I may cut this part out because it may take a while. Yeah, I'm just going to cut this out. Hey, she's off. Really taking one of these off is pretty self-explanatory. Doesn't really matter where you're going, but the two nuts there, throttle, choke, and fuel lines are basically going to be the last things you do. The breathers and all the linkages you really don't have to do in order. Um, but look at that. That's just plumb nasty. No wonder this thing ran like shit. So, I'm gonna take it apart, hopefully not screw up the float, blast her all down, and uh, put it back together again. So, catch you whenever I get all that done. Okay, so a little hint to you folks, put the choke cable on first. It makes your job a lot easier. Well, here's a little extra. Probably would help to stick it through. The damn choke thing first. Call it the little choke box mount. Ugh. There we go. Okay. Choke cable all the way in. Where's choke cable? Oh, there it is. Alright. That's all the way in. So everything on here is half inch. All the big stuff at least is. So that'll make you guys happy. All you gotta do is get a half inch wrench and two different size flathead screwdrivers and then a pair of pliers of some sort, whether they're needle nose, but you're gonna need them for the cotter pins. Oh, that reminds me, I might put that throttle cotter pin in there. That'll be fun. Fuel lines half an inch, like I said. Fun for you guys, because... Oh, don't do me like that. I so, see, you just went on there smoothly earlier. Okay. Pull up my sleeves again. Half inch. Come here. Alright. Let's tighten that up. Actually, probably better tighten this guy up first. Be a good idea for you folks to go sequentially and to do one side snug, do the other side, and then go back and forth and tighten them again. Snug there, 
go back to the other side, snug it up, go to the other side, snug it up again, and go till it's all tight. Okay, there's that side, there's that side. And I think this is the last one because we're getting pretty tight. All right. <sighs> I need these guys and that cotter pin and the pin. I need to put the throttle back on. Which I actually might need to move down ever so slightly. So that I can yank it out towards the motor or towards the air cleaner. And then have the hard part of it. And all I gotta do is come back here just bend her up or sideways or something so that it don't doesn't want to move on you all right moment of truth let's see if i can do what i did on the 77 let's see if she rolls over okay that's out of gear turn the fuel on as i almost forgot to turn that on I'm hoping the float did not get messed up because at that rate I'm going to have to get a new carb for it because I can't even get in there. I took all four screws out of the top and you can't separate the top and bottom. It's just like it's been glued together. So, yeah, kind of seem, I'm not going to accuse my grandfather of doing a bad job, but it kind of seems like a farmer fix job. So, that's no good. Okay, something's leaking. Fuel, that's what's leaking. Why is it leaking? Turn off. Round two. Hope the plugs didn't get fouled. Out. Okay, fuel's on. Still spitting a bit of gas. Of course.
don't know about you guys, but I'm boggled. I ain't got a clue. I don't know. I'm going to have to put a new carb on it. It does the exact same damn thing that it did whenever I didn't clean it, so I don't know. I'm... This one's beating me. I don't know. I really don't know what its issue is because... It's running like a top and then once you get it below a certain point, it just dies. I don't know. I, I, I'm confused. See? That's what it does. That's what it should do. That's how it should idle. And the only way it does it is whenever the choke's pulled. It's when it's halfway shut. And then of course, I'm gonna guess something, the jet right there for the idle adjustment is being blocked. Even after cleaning it out, taking it apart as far as I could get it. Which apparently wasn't good enough. Um, because it's still doing the same thing it was before. So I'm going to guess it just needs to be replaced. Because I can't take that carburetor apart any further than that. And the screws are stripped. I don't know. I think I just need to put a, a new carb on it later. Okay, so, to add on the carburetor video, what I've done to this as of yet is I've put, uh, taken the plugs out, I've cleaned them, put them all back in, and it doesn't want to restart. So, here's what it does. Kick the ignition on. See how slow it's grinding around for? It is whatever that expression meant. But basically saying this thing this thing's always done that and I want to know why. Alright, so do a little elect electrical diagnosis. What well, we got at the battery. It'd help if that was on, wouldn't it? Make my dumb ass look stupid. Six volts. Okay, what about when you press the button? 4.2. Alright, so we're going to go to the top side of the starter button, which is the inlet for the electricity, the top one. Read 6 volts. Okay, you're getting voltage there. Uh, I don't know if you guys can be able to see that. But there's two bolts down there. The bottom one is where I'm going to go touch. And get on it. It's kind of feel of a feeling game almost. You gotta feel your way down there. Because I don't want to take any of the sheet metal off. Come on, let me out. Got a wire that's holding on to it. Alright, I'm touching it. Alright, press the button in. Okay, am I getting any reading now? Had a reading earlier what it gives. Damn, two volts. Yeah, there's our problem right there. That starter switch. That took no t no trouble at all. That's why this thing starts like a pig. It's because that starter switch is bad. Oh, I don't know if that's the original one or not, but I don't know. That's why the thing doesn't want to start. So, 
I don't know what I'm going to do about that because I really don't want to order any of the new ones because they're all practically junk. So if anyone can tell me where I can find a good aftermarket starter switch that won't fry itself within the first five minutes of using it, that would be just fine and dandy. Uh, for example, I'm just going to use this guy as a test dummy. This is what a proper one should be running. So switch that to there. Okay, do your battery. Help if I was up and around it. And I'm gonna have to use two different hands. 6.3. Okay, we getting at the top here. A little more, but that's probably because of the. Okay. So figure out a way to put that on cruise control. Ow. Don't jump across there, you'll just probably spark it. Wow, this starter switch is bad even. So this one's only making about four volts right there. Which is borderline acceptable oh my fuel okay apparently my fuel filter is leaking which is just freaking great but that's the one issue with these push button systems is that um that's always going to lose voltage right there and i that's never been a good thing so i don't know what I could do to fix it if it's just corrosion that needs to be fixed or if it's different cables a different starter switch I know it needs a new switch because we're losing four volts right out of the battery from it that's not good um, but yeah that'll have to be addressed Alright, that'll do it for this video because I'm practically done for the day, so yeah, thanks for watching.